which way? What are they doing to him? I told you not to come to this place. Good limit, Hugh. He's down there. Hugh? No! No, don't go that way. It's not safe. We'll have to go around. Welcome to Kovaria. Thank you. Oh, you haven't met my wife? Uh, I don't think so. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Morgan. That's a fine family you've got. We enjoyed your sermon, Mr. Griffith. Really lovely it was. Thank you. Come then. Mm. Not bad at all for someone not used to the place. I noticed there was a lot about sinners being forgiven and very little about them being judged. You want to be careful not to encourage them, Mr. Griffith. You will find that's the last thing they need around here. Yeah? Yes. Well, well, little dab is in the dark here very near. Come on. Like the lamp, Yanto. Doing it, ma'am. What was the new preacher like? Oh, not bad at all. Lovely. Okay, first class. He went on long enough. That wasn't him. That was a peak gun showing off. But well, where's Ivor gone off to now, then? Oh, not gone off to now. He only came with us as far as the corner. Well, this is getting beyond, this is. Surely he's not going to miss his supper again. He's not eating enough to keep a bird alive. And do well, the way he came in last night, walking back over the mountains in the pitch black, soaked to the skin, third time in a week, no sense or reason in it. What does he go over to the Ronda for all the time? Well, I don't know, indeed, Bach. Well, why don't we ask him? <laughs> well, you tell us, I suppose, in his own good time. <laughs> Dad, Mum, I've brought somebody to meet you. Is it all right? Yes, yes, all right. Why do you have to take your tie off the minute you get back in the house? All right, now, Mum. Will you come in, please? Dad, this is Mr. Price. Keeps a grocer shop in Mardy. Oh, eh? Well, how are you, sir? I'm very well indeed. Uh, there's chilly. It is getting the evenings again. Aye, aye. Ma'am, this is Mr. Price. He's Bronwyn's father. Who's Bronwyn? <laughs> Mr. Price. 
We don't have a cooked supper on Sundays, but there's plenty of cold meat and beetroot and pickled onions, and there's pears and custard and tish and lap. Now, you sit down by here while I make a nice cup of tea. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Norton. Now, then, give me a bowl of a surprise. Now, you. make yourself at home yes, now. Yes, I will indeed. Thank you. Well, I don't know. We fill six drums. Well, there you are, then. Aye, but he's on a different heading, isn't he? Uh, I'll crack us one of them. You can't blame everything on the management, see, Anto? Who the hell are you going to blame it on, then? It was after the nightmare to stand a pair of timber before they went off. Now, look, if Reese had enough bloody sense, I All right, Yunto, now. That's enough. Someone knocking, ma'am. <laughs> Bringing that quarter of tea back in about time. What's the matter with her? The door's open. Come on in, Maggie. Hello, you. Oh, I... It's Bronwyn. Is it? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. That's nice. Are you Aunt Harrod? Yes. Bronwyn? Yes. Oh. <laughs> and me. Of course, and you. You know, those old legs of yours coming on the knee. Oh, get in bed, thanks. Do you like your sheets? Yes, of course. You'll be staying to tea now, is it? Oh, yes, please. Can I help? No, no, not the first time. And not in that pretty frock. Oh, come over by here and tell me. How that big boy of mine ever got hold of somebody like you? <laughs> well, he was in Maddy for a choir competition and he came in the shop for some eggs. Just two, see, for his voice. Yes, I know. Raw. He believes in that. Well, I said they come cheaper by the half dozen. Oh, but give me a clean he... shirt, will you? I'm going to Maddy. I don't think you are, boy. Oh, I'd like to see anyone try and stop me. I know just who's going to do it and all. Oh, for shame, girl, kissing a man with no shirt on. And you, you're worse than she is. Have sense, boy, in front of the child. Well, well, well. Bronwyn, is it? Yes, Mr. Morgan. Well, welcome to our house indeed. Do, do. I don't think I've seen a prettier sight since the first day I came to the valley and saw Jones the manager's maid. Outside, sweeping the step. Oh, get on with you. Soft old thing. <laughs> Boswell's Life of Johnson. Can you read this, you? Yes, Mr. Griffith. Well, isn't it a bit heavy going for a little boy? No, it's good. Hmm? <laughs> Who taught him to read, Mr. Morgan? Well, he's had a couple of years schooling, see, and his teacher pops in now and again to give him some sums to do. How long will it be before Hugh can walk again? Forgive me, but uh, you must have had doctors. What did they say? Ah, well, we did have Dr. Richards at the time. What he said was that... Mrs. Morgan, this is a very intelligent little boy you have here. And it is his life we are talking about. Now, I believe he has a right to know what he can or cannot do with it. Now, if you will tell us what Dr. Richards said, we will make up our minds how far to believe him. Well, what he said was that nature must take its course. <laughs> this handy phrase for a doctor to carry in his little black bag. Apt for all occasions and no danger will ever be proved wrong. Hugh, do you know what nature is? I thought it was plants and animals. Well, that's right. And light and heat and crystals and stars and volcanoes and the law of gravity and all the rules about how things work, but somebody made up the rules, right? Mm-hmm. Nature is the handmaiden of the Lord. I remember once or twice when she's been ordered to hurry herself up more than usual. Now, listen, Hugh. I am going to come and visit you every day. And next spring, when the first daffodils come out in the mountains, you are going to be up there picking them.
That is a promise. Bloody terrible storm. Hold on now. I had a tram nearly full this morning, and two tram loads of bloody ribbons came right down on top. I had to stand an eight foot cog first thing this morning. And Guy Davis took four drams to the Muckle yesterday. I'm going to call a meeting of the check committee. Oi, you are the news. What? He's the overman. He kicked the bucket funeral Saturday. Never. I had just heard no man. Blood poisoning. Damn, that was quick. Only last Saturday was bridging into me run loading muck at the head in. The job for you, Yant. <laughs> they wouldn't touch a union man with a barge pole. Just wondering who they are going to pick up. I know some people will be crawling around the manager. Yeah. Hi, Bando. My nice cushy job. Bit of extra money. Do I. Right. Chance of you finding it. Morgan, Yanto. I'm back. Right. Here he is. No more excuses. Say goodnight to him, William. No, 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 no. Not yet, now. Oh, why not, then? All in good time now. Put him down. I'm going to put your sewing away. Now, come on, all of you. Sit down. Come on, now. I've got an item of news to read to you. Page four, right at the top. Handwriting competition. Boys under 12 years of age. The first prize of two guineas has been awarded to Master Hugh Morgan, son of Mr. Willie Morgan for an entry of outstanding merit. <laughs> yes, look, there, not bad for a boy who's been lying there for three years and never a grumble out of him. Oh, there's a clever boy then. Oh, you old sly, and you never even told us. Oh, Bente, get it, diolch iddo, Bente. He's the first one in the family to have his name in the paper. Well, give me that now. Where are you going after oh, that? Oh, I'm just going to show this to a couple of people. No. <laughs> oh, hurry, Adi. There's comfort you are. There won't be a minute. I'm just going to run in and tell Maggie next door. Oh. <laughs> Listen, boy. How would you like a job? Job? I've been racking my brain. See, who can I get to write out letters from the union? To who? All sorts of managers, counsellors, solicitors, lecturers, stuff like that. Oh, they look a lot better with nice writing and all them commas and full stops done right. And I'll pay you, mind. No need. Oh, yes, fair play. Then you can save up and help to pay for a holiday when you get to walk better. What'll Dada say? It's no odds to him, is it? It's union business, private. Why are you against him, Yanto? I'm not against him. It's he's against me over this. Well, what does he want, then? Different from you? It's not over what we want, see. It's over how we get it. Dad thinks, know your place, keep your nose clean, say please and thank you, tidy, and they'll treat you right. I see. If you don't stand up to the flamers, they'll walk all over you. And they've walked over him too once or twice when he stuck his neck out a bit too far. Only now they think they've got him in their pockets. Hello, Tom. You, you bought another whippet, is that right? Aye. Is it jealous you are, or what? If they have picked your father for Overman, it is only because he's the best man for the job. As many would have given their eye teeth for it. Aye. And that's just the point, isn't it? What is? What was the matter with Bob Howells? Why didn't they pick him? Or Tom Davies? Well, why should they? They wouldn't have done it any better than your father. And no worse, neither. And they are senior to him, but they were passed over. It's never been done before, and everybody knows why it was done this time. Why, then? It was done as a slap in the face to me. Oh, because oh, I am Lodge Secretary of the Union. And they've heard that he is against it, and they want to make it awkward for me any way they can. Oh, don't be so childish, Yanto. I'm sure such an idea never entered their heads. Well, I can name you two or three hundred who think differently. Oh. Minister call today? Yes, yes, he was here for about two, 20 minutes. Is you showing any progress? Mr. Griffith walked him around the room, twice. Is he walking on his own at all? That's the point. Mr. Griffith says... I know he... what Mr. Griffith says. I'm altogether happy about it. He's a minister, not a doctor. He should know there are some things that have been put up with and faced. I think it's wicked to go around raising false hopes in people. Perhaps it's more wicked to go about telling people to lie down under things that needn't be put up with and didn't ought to be put up with. Yes, do it. I don't remember asking for your opinion. I would think that he has the right to speak it all the same. Not in that tone of voice and not at my table. And I don't want pit matters brought into this house. Daddy, 
ladder he was talking about here. I know what he was talking about. Do you think I'm a fool? William. Owen. Tell Dada you're sorry. I'm sorry if I sounded rude. But if it's rude to say the things are wicked, it wasn't me started saying it. I won't leave the table. I'll leave the house! Come on, calm down, boy. Nothing was said at all, fair enough. The trouble is when one side can make statements, but the minute we open our mouths, that's all wrong. Ah, there's your trouble. I know that Owen wouldn't have said a thing like that if he hadn't been put up to it. Now, Yento, you get out of this room before I do something I'm sorry for. Like a shot and all, and don't you worry. Stand out of the house and all, and that makes two of us. Oh, aye? And if you two leave this house, you'll never come back inside it again. Good! Quilly, don't let them. He hadn't been down the pit five minutes, and he thought he knew more about it than men who had been there for 20 years. But 20 years ago, it was different, wasn't it? Oh, I were you there 20 years ago? No. Then what gives you the right to talk? Dad, everybody's got the right to talk. Especially when they're doing men's work and earning men's money. And I've got the right to a bit of respect in my own house. Oh, no one is denying that. Well, all right, then. Well, if they just sit down and behave themselves for the rest of the meal, we'll, we'll forget all about it. Come on, Owen. He's a good boy. Sit down. Your father's going to overlook it. He knows you didn't mean it. Ma'am, I said nothing that needs to be overlooked, and I meant every word of it. Yanto, please. Sit down and behave tidy now, just till we've finished eating. Depends what he means by behave. If table manners means that we are not allowed to speak the truth here, then I'd rather be a pig. All right, then, finish. Now get your clothes and go. Ivor. No, not Ivor. William, stop him. If he thinks that they're in the right, he can go too. Sorry, ma'am. It'll be better if I go with them. Sorry, Dad. Yes, yes, my son. I know that you were there. Quinn, where do you suppose those boys are going to go? And how long are they going to be from home? Boys? What boys? This is my boy, Beth, this one by her. They gave up being boys years ago, you heard them? So it's none of my business where they go. Quilly! And where do you think you are going, my girl? Mom, I'm going after them. Sit down, you are going nowhere. I suppose you know where they are. Oh, well, there's plenty of neighbours ready to pass on news like that. Do you know anything about this woman they've taken lodgings with? Widow, we were told. Widow? Have you been there, Brown? Of course I've been there. Oh, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Ivor wants us to get married in a month. What did you tell him? Mrs. Morgan, I'd have said yes anyway, but more than ever now. I'd marry him tomorrow to get him out of a place like that. But where will you get married from? Your dad can't do the wedding. Men are no good for anything like that. Yes, well, that's the triple, isn't it? We had thought once it could have been from here. Yes. So did I. Well, aren't you going to stay to eat? No, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Morgan. Ivor sends you his love. I'm going to see him now. Bron, wait a minute. I'm coming. Quilly. Quilly, man, Harold has fetched her clothes and gone. Gone? Gone where? Down by Nuns, of course. I couldn't stop her. 
to look after the boys because nobody else is doing it. Well, I'll go and have a word with her. First, you will have a word with me. Now get out of my way, Beth. Please to listen to me, William, or there may be a couple more missing by the time you get back. Well? Look what she brought back from there now, just. Look! Yanto socks. Look! A wind shirt. Filthy. Achavi. And Harat says the sheets on their bed are fit for shoe rags. And God only knows what she's feeding them. She's got blowflies buzzing round the pantry as big as black pats. She gets every night too drunk to stand and language like an old Rodney on her. And one of the men in her back room have been summoned for stealing three gold watches from out of a jewel as in Ponty. Well, I'm not having an Arad living in a place like that. Well, I'm not having any of them in a place like that. The boys can choose for themselves. But why they should choose to live in dirt is beyond me. But I've given up trying to understand them. Choose? What choose? With people coming from all over the country looking for jobs? Must they dig coal all day and tramp the streets all night hunting for apartments and a good home here waiting for them? Oh, Beth. I can see that you are on their side. But I'm getting Ang Harrod out of there. Nobody's side. You're all driving me mad here. Yeah, nobody's side. Only peace. Boys still at Bynum's? Huh? I had a bit of you on Mum's blackberry tart once. What about it? Well, nothing. It's just that any flamer who could put his feet on the old Mum's table goes and puts them under Sissy Bynum's. <laughs> well, I mean, he can't be 16 ounces. Mm. You want to watch out, mine? Leave it too long and she won't have any room left for you. Why not? You do. They haven't heard yet, man. Well, it's no odds to them anymore, is it? I mean, if their man wants to take in lodgers, well, that's her business. Well, now, you tell that uh, this one has moved in now, gets on very well with the old man, you know? Yeah, but... Uh -huh. Time to eat it while it's hot. Fetch another chair from the front room, will you? Hello. Oh, wait. Now you sit down by there. Hello. All right, you two. Nobody's going to bite your head off. Now then. Before I say grace, there's something that has to be said. Ivor, Yunto, Owen. It was your decision to leave this house. And if you come back, well, that's your decision too. But bear in mind that I haven't asked you. But it's your mum who gets the worst of it when there's bad blood in the house. So, I promise her to have you back. On one condition. And what is that? We are all to be lodgers here. Well, how can you be a lodger? When I cannot be a father. Because a father is one whose word is obeyed, and mine is not. So I shall pay my way, and you're free to do the same. And your mother will look after you and look after me. Now, that's all there is to it. Dad, there was no need of this. Your word always carried in everything to do with the house and the family. All we were saying was Stop that we got now, if this is supposed to be a boarding house and I am supposed to be the one running it, then I am making the rules. And one of them is no arguing round the table. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is Bronwyn coming then? <laughs> Not that I know of. Come on, Merchie. Right. We thank you, Lord, for the food on our table. Amen. 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 Dad, I don't think any of them know her. 
Well, if somebody would pull the curtains back, we'd have a better chance of finding out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do know or whatever. Well, as I. You remember Mog Evans, top house? Used to be my buddy. Oh, aye, and moved to Chalky. Yes, well, their house fell over down by there with, with subsidence. And this is their Margaret, and she's going to spend a few weeks with us. Now then, Margaret, what do you have? A bit of the leg or the wing? Anything, Mr Morgan, please. Have a nice wing. Well, all about the pastor's nose, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Leave her alone. Leave her alone? Only joking he was, man. Well, yes. if there's any joking to be done, perhaps you'll have it out on me. See, now, look at the scowl on him. All over nothing, too. Take it off, man. You'll burn a hole in the tablecloth. Never mind the tablecloth. She's a guest in the house, right? Oh, come on now, Owen. You're making too much of it. Now, she's bound to find it strange at first. Being an only child. Not used to so much company. But you took it no harm. And Margaret didn't take any offence, did you, Margaret? No, Mr. Morgan. There. Now, come on, now. My mother always used to say of us when we wandered off, leave them alone. They'll always come to the manger. Oh, Mr. Griffith, is it today, then? Well, today's as good as any, isn't it? Where's your clothes, then? Got them cushioned under here. I mean, they're all weak. Oh, you, they're all increasing. No, oh, does it matter? I don't suppose they'll even fit him, no? Well, let's try, then, shall we? Come on, then, boy. Well, what about this? Oh, I should leave it, wouldn't you? Nothing better than a flannel and his jacket on top. Oh, and a muffler in case it's windy up there, eh? What do you say? Hey. What's the matter? I practised every day, like you said. And last night, when they were all out, I walked from there to there ten times. I've never done more than eight before. But nothing's happened. I'm sure I'll never get up the mountain. I'm sorry. Kilbach, listen. It's not true to say nothing's happened. It's been happening every day for months. If you were looking for a miracle, you looked right past it and never even noticed it. But it's not going to happen overnight, is it? Now, six months ago, your mother and father were sure you would never walk again. Now, only last Sunday, they asked me how long I thought it would be before you could start school again. School again? Well, of course, why not? Well, maybe by the beginning of the next school year. And if not, certainly by Christmas. Do you believe me? You said he'd be picking daffodils, though. Well, of course he'd be picking daffodils. Well, how will he get up there? Well, by the grace of God and a bit of help from me. I'm going to carry him. are better than mine. Look, there's Ang Harad. Where? Come on up. Shall I? Yes, come on. Oh, there's lovely. But our mum, is it? Yes, most of them. Who's that little bunch for, you? Oh, no need to ask him that. For the prettiest girl in Glamorgan, isn't it, Hugh? They're for Bronwyn. <laughs> I see. The prettiest girl in Glamorgan. Used to be so pretty, eh? 
Why are they spoiling everything? Yes. All that tip's come since I was here last. Oh, it's nothing but blind greed. The earth is enough for everyone, if we treat it right. But these men can't wait. They want all, take all, and put nothing back. <laughs> I'm afraid they're laying up trouble for themselves. Come in. What's the matter? I've done a terrible thing. <laughs> what happened? They're all gone out. There's a prayer meeting. And I was staying in to make a bit of supper and I dropped it. Nothing it broke. There's nothing. It's been loose a long time. But what will she say? Nothing, because I can amend it now. <gasps> ah, easy. I'm supposed to be in there with you. Yeah, well, I'll be wanting somebody to hold a piece of solder for me. Oh, I'd better stay here then, is it? Yeah, all right. You're out here a lot, aren't you? Well, it's quieter out here. Dodge all the old arguments. What's this thing? It's for Kerry Penn Cart. It's a sickle I'm making for him. It's clever. Owen, what's a perpetual motion machine? Yanto told you about that, did he? Yes. Why? Well, so many teases me about because I tried to make one. I bet you will too one day. And Harrod says you do invent a lot of things. I get a lot of ideas, but for most of them you'd need money. I wish I had some. What for? But so I could give it to you. Bagel. Mend it quicker when they'll be back before long. I wish they'd never come back. I'd better go in. No, I'll be wanting you in a minute. I forgot. In fact, I'm wanting you all the time. Oh, you mustn't say that. I can't help it if it's true. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Margaret, you are so beautiful. Who, oh, me? No. Yes. I wish I was. I love your face. I love your voice. I love everything about you. I love you, Margaret. Can you? Only five days you've known me. Five minutes was enough. Margaret, I've only been playing at all this, but now I'm going to go white hot at it. And when I sell all my inventions and get rich, you shall have everything your heart desires. All beautiful things, lovely clothes, no need to work about the house or anything. What house? Our house. When we're married. We must get married, Margaret, so that you belong to me, nobody else. I can look after you always, all my life. And you'll be happy every minute. I'll stab myself for every tear. Oh, there's nice things you say. When will you marry me? I'll have to ask Dada. Margaret. Oh, Margaret. Ivo Gwillem, wilt thou take this woman to be thy wedded wife? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her and comfort her? Keep and honor her in sickness and in health, and keep thee only unto her so long as ye both shall live. I will. Bronwyn Meyer, wilt thou take this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? <laughs> There's beautiful she looked. Her mother would have been so proud. Come on, a little bit, a little bit, a tiny bit. That will do for you. Maggie gave for the crew we've set. It was Auntie Sarah gave the pillow kisses. Well, I thought he'd done better when they played him scrum hard. He's a lot of standing. You've had to do your show now. You're all right. Yeah, fine, thanks. It reminds me to eat, though. Would yes. you like me to... Uh, well, there's still one or two to come in. Uh, uh, Beautiful. Hey, how do you like that? That is the recipe. No. no. I'd say you've done them proud. Well... It's always a relief when everything goes off all right. You! That's what I'm talking to! Cheeky young devil! I don't have to take orders from you! Oh, don't you try to talk to me like that, or by God, I'll flash in the midday lights out of you! Come on, then, try it! Do, oh, I damn, I'll do more than try it! If I catch you near my daughter hey, again... Hey, I... hey, 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 what the hell's going on here? You ask him what's going on. I thought this was supposed to be a decent, respectable house here. What's the matter? Now, what's he talking now, about? Now, calm down, Mr. Ever. Would you calm down? Damn good thrashing, that's what he wants. Ah, oh, shut your mouth. Oh, hish, John, you're making it worse. Well, he couldn't knock a hole in a rice pudding, could he? Knock holes in that bloody little waster any day. Mr. Evans, there's no need of language like that. I will be the judge of that, and I'll trouble you to mind your own business. Goodness gracious, what's all this shouting? Mrs. Morgan, uh, you will have to know it. Uh, I'm having my daughter from here right away. No, you're not, then, because I won't come with you, so there. That's the way to tell him, silly old fool. You'll do I'm ashamed of you. Say you're sorry to Mr. Evans. No, ma'am. William, it's a terrible thing to happen. Well, all right, now, all right, let's find out exactly what did happen. 
Your son was in the pantry with my daughter. Oh, I. Eh? And what was he doing? We don't want to go into all that. His arm was about her waist. It was kissing her. Do, do. <laughs> <laughs> Against your wishes, was it, Margaret? No, Mr. Morgan. I wanted him to. Because <laughs> I love him and we're going to be married. Oh, well, that puts a different complexion on it altogether. I didn't know. Nor did we even until this minute, but we'd be very happy to have Margaret into the family. Sorry about the first quilling, but you can't be too careful ah, about these right things. It's all right now, now. Now then, Yanto, you say you're sorry and everything will be squared away. Come on now, Yanto. Man. I am not sorry for saying what I said the way he was then. But if I said it the way he is now, I would be very sorry indeed, Mr. Evans. Aye. Well, that's about the best we'll get from that quarter, boy. Oh, have a drink. <laughs> Let's say good night. Uh, we're going soon. Oh, and uh, congratulations, by the way. She's a very pretty girl. So everybody seems to think. Why then? Don't you want them to? Have you seen the way they look at her? Well, she can't help them looking, can she? They don't look at Bron like that. Oh, well, well Bron's a bit different, I suppose. Yes, I know. Bron's like our man, so you're all right. How do I know what Margaret is like? Well, it'll take you a lifetime to find that out. There must be millions of kinds. It's only two that matter. One's like Mam and Bron. There's the other kind. Say good night to them for us. Oh, well, first one gone. Oh, ma'am, go on. Only six houses away, isn't it? You sure that old house won't be cold for you now? No, I've laid a fire and I've asked Mrs. Hughes to go in and put a match to it. She's got plenty of sense, this wife of yours. <laughs> and gaining a daughter, mind. And I'll call you ma'am too now if you let me. I hardly remember my own. Nice. 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 Yekida. Yekida. Right. And what about this one? Mm. Crochet belly. This is right. right. <coughs> Ready? Ready? Crochet belly had an engine. It was always wanting mending. And according to its power, it could do four miles an hour. Did you ever see? Did you ever see? Did you ever see? Do you know what time it is to be eating and drinking and carousing and entertaining prize fighters in your house? Is this how you look upon a sacrament of holy matrimony, an excuse for people making pigs of themselves? Oh, give Mr. Elias a pint of warm brew, Beth. No, indeed, I won't come tamping in here like that. And shame on you two giving your house over to the things I've been hearing about. Drunkenness and brawling and young girls not being safe under your roof. How would you like a clout under your roof? Oh, no. Let me out. Let me, lovely No, boy. no, come on, now, come on. There'll be no fighting in this house. Now, sit down, the lot of you. As for you, Mr. Griffith, 
Your conduct is fit for a meeting of the deacons. I am surprised and deeply hurt to think that such a man has been teaching my children in Sunday school. Mr. Elias, I'm sorry if you're hurting your good conscience by any conduct of mine. But you must remember that the man himself was at Cana. He even provided the best wine. Now, what exactly are you objecting to? I never thought to see the day when I would hear a minister of the gospel stand up barefaced and say, what is objectionable about profaning the Sabbath day? The Sabbath day? Is that proof enough for you? Oh, Mr. Elias, I was prepared to believe that you might have been misinformed. I thought that at least you had some serious charge to bring. But to come in here and work up all that venom over a petty, fogging little quibble like three minutes on the hands of a clock, that is indefensible. The letter killeth, Mr. Elias. It is the spirit that giveth life. There are too many of your kind around here, and too many in the chapel, too, trying to get the whip hand there. But if they do it in Calvaria, it will be over my dead body. Now get out, Mr. Elias. Go on, get out. I am going. But you'll be sorry. Did you ever see such a funny thing before? Was it my fault then? Do you have to tell all those people for? I thought it was meant to be between the two of us. Because he was going on the two. I wanted to make him see that it was all right. Some of the lads were saying you must be in a hurry to make sure of it, telling everybody like that. What do you mean? I don't know. When he was having a talk with you for, he was saying he was going out with Bron six months before she let him kiss her. I see. All right for you to want it wrong for me. You didn't think that at the time? It was the way they all laughed. They were laughing at me too. I thought I was going off my head. Wanted to jump in the river. Came back, looked through the curtains, and there you were by the piano as if everything was all right. I thought it was, didn't I? Singing away, talking and laughing with Diane Kovartha. God only knows what that joke was. I've heard some of their wedding jokes. If you think that they would talk dirty in your mother's house, or if you think that I would laugh at them if they did, then right enough, Owen Morgan, I think you are going off your head. Terrible stew. I'm never going back in that house again. Is that what Owen been saying something? I hate him. Can't stay here all night. Can if I like. Catch your death, man. I don't care. Why don't I go and fetch your things? You'll have to look sharp to get home to Trioki before dark. I'm never going back there again either. What? It was my dad's fault. He spoils everything. I think after Owen saw him, he got to thinking I can't be much class. Anyway, they're all expecting me to come back engaged. What can I say? You'll soon find somebody else. No. He's the only boy I ever had. I don't know what to say to them, see? You knew what to say to our Owen? Not really. Up to this morning, he used to do all the talking and I just listened. God, it was like music. Well, you're talking now, anyway. It's because everything's spoiled and I don't care anymore what any of you think. I'll go to London. I'll be a lady's maid. Oh, there won't be any more coaches today. You should have started this morning. But I haven't got any money. <laughs> now, have a think about this. If you don't let him see you've been crying, nobody's going to know whether he dropped you or you dropped him. Now, why should you be the one to run? Stay on a bit. 
Show him you don't give a damn. He might come round anyway. I hate him. If you want my opinion, our Owen's a bloody fool. Doesn't know when he's well off. And if he says anything to you while I'm there, out of the way, I let him have it sharp. I thought you were going to fetch you. Then I saw that you'd gone out. Well, there was still time, wasn't there? No, no, the deacons are started by then. They were all carrying chairs and plonking them down. Well, he won't be long. You go home, Beth. I'll wait for him. Come on, ma'am. Will my Sean Lewis step forward? Adultress! Well, may you be weeping, my Sean Lewis. Your lusts have found you out and you have paid the price of all women like you. Your body was the trap of the devil and you allowed temptation to visit you. Now you are bringing an illegitimate child into the world against the holy commandment of God. You are not fit to enter the house of the Lord. My St. Louis, do you... Admit your sin. If you wish to make your peace with the Eternal Father, you must answer. Do you admit your sin? Oh, there's sorry I am. I will never do it again. Have you never heard that the sins of the Father shall be visited Stop upon... Stop it! Stop it! Cruel! It's cruel! Silence, boy! You shouldn't be here at all. You're talking about things you know nothing about. Yes, I do, then. She is a wicked girl. Just because she let Chris Phillips take her up the mountain. How dare you? How dare you have the effrontery to stand up in front of this congregation of god fear? Scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. It is written in the Bible. If thine but eye... But it says, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. Come on, you. Why aren't you saying all this to Chris Phillips, then? Has he told Mom yet? They're in the front room now. Where's the girls? He sent them out. Well, you, your father is very ashamed of you. I hear you've been saying some unheard of things down in Calvaria. Yes, ma'am. Good. Good boy. Your mum is so glad she could scream. Beth? Well, it's time somebody told those sanctimonious humbugs. All the nastiness in their own minds, and they put it all off into some poor girl and start preaching about purity and sin as if she was any different from the rest of us, except for worse luck and a bit less sense. They make me sick. As bad as he is, girl. Yes, Gwilly Morgan. And you are as bad as that pack down by there. I can see now where they get it from. No wonder I'm rearing a nest of scorpions in this house. It's you it is. Go on, scratch.
just came over oh, there. Look at that beautiful love. Oh. <laughs> They're for my brother in Kvavin. He always sends us around about now to fatten up. I never sent white ones before. I didn't even know you could get white ones. Mum, look, the turkeys have come. Aren't they pretty? Oh, that's nice. Mum. Yeah? What's the matter? Mrs. Feynman is having a baby in the old shed down by the ironworks. How do you know? Tegwith came in out just when you were over the bakehouse. I gave her a sheet for tearing and two old grey blankets. Oh, you did, did you? Mum, they put her out without a stick or a stitch. Well, I'm just saying you could have asked, that's all. And there's all pots and pans out in the shed. You didn't want those to do. Anything else? Just some more cups that are good chipped. Well, have a good look round. Go on. We've still got one or two things left. No, that's all. Except some more clothes from the box room and my blue cloak. Your best cloak? Well, good gracious alive, girl. Even in the Bible, if you've got two coats and you have to give one away, there's no rule that says it's got to be the best one. Have they got anything to eat down there? Oh, I don't know. Well, where's your brains, girl? Food first, isn't it? Dad. I'm not going to feel much like looking at new cloaks for a bit. And when she does, she'll only sell it for gin. Here, you take this. And knock on a few doors on the way down and ask them to put what they can spare in here, all right? Can I go with an upper carriage? Well, uh, perhaps Margaret could come. No, no, no. I need one of you girls here. The men will be home soon, expecting the food out and the baths ready. Me then. Or oh, let him come. He can wait outside. I won't stop long. All right, go on. What are you going to do about Margaret? Go to hell. What, well, you're telling her too? Did she say that? Now, don't be so daft, man. Anybody can see something's wrong. You're going wrong with a face like a fist. We're having little weeps in corners. Why didn't you go on home then? We could all have some peace. I don't know. You mean peace? She don't keep a lot of row. Oh, I've never met anybody as dense as you. <laughs> Dull as a bat, me, isn't it? The trouble with living in a house full of geniuses. Only I like to have things above board, see. So did you ask her to marry you or didn't you? Are you still going to her, aren't you? What the hell has it got to do with you anyway? I just don't like to see the girl being mucked around, that's all. Damn it, used to be you sticking up for her. I remember when she first came here, only pulling her leg a bit I was man, and you went up like a flaming Roman candle. Well, if you are finished with her, have the guts to come out and say so. Give her a chance to find somebody else. On the lookout already, is she? Oh, well, I go too well. You don't want her? If she's in the same room, you all look straight in the face at her. But you won't finish it off because you want to know all the ins and outs of what she's doing, who she's talking to. Just... So it's finished then, you and Margaret, is it? Fair enough, boyo. That's as good as an answer. If it wasn't finished, you'd say so fast enough. what I wanted. Oh, he's a beautiful baby. Beautiful. Aye, oh, aye, I suppose so. Just come to the wrong place, that's all. I mean, he's beat before he start, isn't he? Poor little bugger. Can I have some more tea? Yes, of course. Do you, do you? Look at all that food. Oh, the kids won't half pitch into that lot when they come back. Where are they? In their grams. Oh. She don't like them, mind. Oh, and they can't stand her. But she's took them till tomorrow. Oh, thank God. By next week, we'll be out of you. You found somewhere to go, then? Aye. Didn't you know? Oh. Uh, Mr Griffith, the minister, he's found that little house has been standing idle on the canal bank. Oh, and he's been after Bryn Williams. <laughs> That's his son's dad, you know. And he's put the fear of God up his shirt. <laughs> so much so, he's going to give me five bob a week. Like maintenance, see? Oh, and he's going to give it straight to the landlord, so I won't make a mess of it this time. He never told me he was going to do that. <laughs> oh, there's a lot he does that nobody around here knows about. <laughs> Prayed for me and all. Christ, what a hope. 
If some of us that he's given a hand who ever really got up there, them flaming angels may wonder what they're paying to. <laughs> oh, Mary. Oh, sit down, sit <sighs> down, Bach. Oh, dear. What does Ivor say to the idea of being a father? He's like a dog with two tails. <laughs> Ron! Hey, don't get too rough now, boy. Oh, Bron, that's nice you always smell. Oh, it's only a bit of old lavender. Hmm. Anything smells good after where we've been. Now, what have you been up to, Bach? I thought he looked a bit white around the gills. He's been sick, ma'am. Oh. Down by the foundry. Oh, no. How is Mrs. Bynum? Oh, she's all right. She had it. It's a boy. Ron? Yes, lovely? You don't want to have all babies, do you? Well, that's a funny thing to say, isn't it? I mean, if the doctor brings me one in his black bag, I'll have to keep it, won't I? Oh, there's a hotel. I'll have to go now. They've all be back in the house before me, and that would never do, would it? And her has just been saying you were talking to her about going away. Can't stay here forever, can I? It's not as if I were a relation. Anyway, our house is nearly finished now. They moved back in. But you said you were never going back there. Oh, I don't care where I go as long as it's not here. Why? I just can't stick it, Yanto, being in the same house with him. I want to go away and have some peace. Best thing for everybody. No. Oh, yes, it is. You ask Owen. I don't want to ask bloody Owen. I am fed up to here with him. He's always been the same, like a wet week, ever since he was a snotty-nosed kid. I don't know what you ever saw in him. I mean, if you want to marry somebody, I don't know why you don't marry me. Well, yes, there you are, look. Why not? We could get a little place right over the other side of the valley. You'd never see him if you didn't want to. But you wouldn't want me to marry you just for that? Oh, I don't know. I think we'd be all right together, you and me. Why not? Can I ever think about it? Oh, yes, of course you can. Margaret. What? You know the way that you've been crying and that and um, wanting to clear out? What about it? You're not in trouble, are you? Would it make any difference? Well, no. No, not really. I mean, if it was us that brought it up, it would take after us, wouldn't it? I couldn't be in that kind of trouble, Yanto. I've never done anything. Honest. There's no need to sound so surprised. You're as bad as him very near. What do you think I am, all the lot of you? I'm sorry. You didn't mind my asking, though. If it had been the first thing that you'd have asked, I'd have... I'd have chucked this at you. Not the way round you did it. There's not very many would do that. Is that yes, then? I don't know yet. We used to have another old bellows, didn't we, ma'am? Yes, it's in the back of the bush. You don't want two, do you? Aye, aye. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Every time this pair come to supper, they find something else that we don't need. It's to a Mr. Abraham. Take no MP. notice of it, boy. Of course you can have House it. House of Commons. Listen, go easy. Westminster. You'll soon have Owen and Margaret trying to get bits and pieces together. Dear Mr. Abraham. When is the wedding, Margaret? Have you fixed anything yet? No. Oh, there's plenty of time. They're both very young. What a no, Winsky. I am writing on behalf of Oh, wait of a minute. The this nib's crossed. Who's that now? Good evening. Oh. oh, come on in. Thank you. Actually, it's your son I've come to see. Uh, no, not you this time, Ivor. Huh. I called at your house. I thought you might be here. The parts for the Messiah. Oh, they've come. Good. Mm. Now, then, about the practices. Uh, when do you want to book the vestry for? It's free on Mondays or Fridays? Or say Mondays, then. All right, fine. Uh, sit down by here a minute, Mr. Gilbert. Have you got the time? Oh, surely. I wanted to have another word with you about Hugh schooling. Yeah. Well, now that he's nearly fit again, it seems a shame to keep him hanging about the house. Well, I agree with you entirely, but that shouldn't be for much longer. Oh, dear. And I wouldn't say he's exactly wasting his time. 
And I can keep him well supplied with books. Now, come on, you. Well, I am writing on behalf... Wait a minute now, Manianto. I'm looking for a bit of advice, yeah, man? And I am waiting for the day that this family has the guts to make a decision without asking Mr. Griffith's advice. What are you on about now? Well, we managed all right before he came, didn't we? But damn, he hasn't been here a 12 month and it's getting so nobody in this family can move a hand or a foot without asking him if it's all right. There's a hara here thinks the sun shines out of his backside. Yeah, and I used to think she was the one with a bit of sense around here. What brought this on, Boyle? Oh, yes, I know you'll stand up for him. Just so long as he collect a choir for you and shove a stick into your hand that you can wave at them. But I think he ought to keep to his own line and not talk about things he does not understand. Hey, now hold on now. Well, my line is trying to interpret the will of God, which covers a pretty wide field. And I'll admit that the things of which I know nothing are beyond counting, but which one in particular do you mean? I am told you've been heard criticising the miners and the union. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect, mind, but at least they're not a lot of parasites. For shame, Miento. No, 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 please. Why do you think I'm a parasite? Because you are doing useless work. Yanto, how can you say that? It was Mr. Griffith that healed you. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Morgan. Hugh healed himself. Oh, why do you think our work is useless? Because you make out that you are shepherds of the flock. Mm -hmm. Now, if this town is your flock, you are letting it live in filth and poverty and doing nothing about it. You're all the same. And you think we're all the same, too. Sheep. Be blowed. I thought man was supposed to be made in the image of God. Is God a sheep, then? Because if he is, I can understand why we're all so damn stupid. Yanto, upset in everyone. Oh, you're going to come and protect him now, are you? Mr. Griffith doesn't need anyone to protect him. But what do you want to upset our man for? Or Bronno, or Margit? Why are they going to be listening to all this quarrelling? Now, look, don't you try and protect Margit against me. Because Margit was out of this room before any of this ever started. And none of you even noticed. And if you ask me, that's typical. Eating a heart out now for weeks under our roof, and nobody in this marvellous Christian family raising a bloody finger. Hey! I have no language in this house. Uh, Mrs. Morgan, I'm sorry for my part in disturbing your peace like this. No. No, it wasn't you. Yes, yes, it always takes two. Yanto, if ever you have time to drop into my lodgings, I'd very much like to discuss your political views with you. We can say anything we like there and not uh, upset anybody. Why? I will and all. You might learn something. How about tomorrow? All right, tomorrow. All right. Then have a look through that before I get there. It'll save us a lot of time. Yes, and that. Oh, and this one will open your eyes. But read the one in your hand first, and I'll be there at eight o'clock. No, no, no. Say quarter past after check committee. No, say half past after Bible class. Right you are, then. Half past eight. I only know I can't stay here with you like this. It's driving me mad. But if you think it'll ever come back again like it was, I'll go home and I'll wait. I don't want to go home. I hate it there. But you know where I am, and you hear what I'm doing, and it's not very far. I must go wherever you want. Do you think it'll ever come right? I don't know, do I? That's not fair. You want to say yes or no. Look, I'm not being like this because it's fair or not fair. It's because I can't help it. If it's any comfort to you, I am ten times more miserable than you are. The other thing was... Yanto said, why don't I marry him? Oh, right, well, you're after him now, then, is it? You couldn't wait, could you? It's got to be somebody, never mind who. He is nice to me, oh. We're not spitting out nastiness all the time and trying to hurt. What are you telling me this for, then? Isn't that trying to hurt me? If I didn't tell you, you'd say, why didn't I tell you? Lies, secrets, deceits, you'd say. Nothing I do is right. I'm telling you while there's still time to stop it. Now, I haven't said yes or no. But if you don't want me, it might as well be yes. I have spoken to the other deacons about it. And we think you ought to be made aware of the strength of public feeling. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Elias. We feel that my sister-in-law has better claims to have been appointed a Sunday school teacher than Miss Sangharad Morgan. Miss Sangharad Morgan is too young and no good at discipline and allows giggling, which disturbs Mr. Phillips's class at the other side of the vestry. You say your sister-in-law has better claims. What are they, please? She has been a member since the chapel was founded. She never puts less than one shilling in the collection. Oh, she is a good and devout woman. I have nothing but respect for her. Then why was she passed over in favour of Miss Sangharad Morgan? 
That is what I am wondering, Mr. Griffith. Because your sister-in-law does not like children, and consequently they do not like her. Now that makes her no less worthy as a person, but I believe that a child's first introduction into the house of God should be a joyous one. I see. I felt sure you would. Thank you for raising the matter, Mr. Elias. Oh, sorry. Busy, are you? No, 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 Mr. Elias is just going. Go in. Thank you. Well, you looked at them at all yet? As a matter of fact, I haven't. Shall I tell you why? Ah, uh, here we go. You telling me things I thought you were going to listen to this. Snap. Isn't that the martyrdom of man by Winwood Reed? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good God, Engels. Right, now, have you read that yet? No. Go and sit down. But this isn't the sort of thing you've been telling them in the chapel. Well, apart from my induction service and Evol's wedding, I don't think you've set foot in the place. How do you know what I've been telling them? Kavatha heard you arguing with somebody in the marketplace. Attacking the union, he said. And the leaders. Well, leaders like Mabon or Abraham, whatever his name is, yes. And as for your miners' union, I was asked my opinion of it. Of course I attacked it. It's one of the worst in the country. You've got yourselves bound hand and foot to this iniquitous sliding scale. Now, what you should be doing is out joining the Federation and fighting for a minimum wage. But that's what I've been trying to tell them for the past two years. I can't get them to see it. Well, if you jump on them like you jumped on me, I'm not surprised. Now, have you read Keir Hardy's speech in this week's paper? No, I haven't. Right. Goodbye then, Mrs. Morgan. Thank you for having me. Wouldn't it be better to wait till the men get home from work? Uh, no, thank you. Young Tor gave me some money for the trap. Say goodbye to them all for me, will you? Where is the wedding going to be? Trioki, next month. Well, we'll all see you then, won't we? It'll be a very quiet one. You mean you don't want us to be there? Well, that's up to Young Tor, really, but he doesn't want a lot of old fuss. And anyway, Dad does not very well. It's turned out all right in a way, hasn't it? He's a good boy, is Yanto. Yes, I know. Goodbye, Hugh. Goodbye. But I thought it was so when she was going to marry. I remember when he came to tell us it was renewed. We was all cheering, eh, weren't we? Well, yes. It sounds great, doesn't it? Especially with old Marvin putting a bit of oil into it and ending up with being lad Van Udder. I think he was leading you to the promised land. Only there's a snag in it, see? Aye. They run out of milk and honey. <laughs> now listen, man. Now I had it all explained to me the other night, see? Now the English are doing a damn sight better than we are all along the line. Oh. And why do you think that is? Save your breath, Yanto Back. You'll never get it into his head. Not without a bloody crowbar. Mind you, plenty of trite. See, but sooner or later, they'd all start talking about this uh, lazy fair. And my brain would start to wilt. Train fair, I understand. Easter fair. Or, 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 or fair play. But as soon as you just start on Lacey Fair, I'm lost. Look, Di, you've got to try to understand. This is very important. So you've got a new buddy. What happened to Owen? Oh. He switched over to night. Got his old store now, then, have he? It's not too soon, either. He's not a kid any longer, is he? Oh, I thought I heard somebody shouting. Can't you get out of there? No. <laughs> How long have you been there? I don't know. I thought nobody would ever come. There's a sharp bit. Where? Down near the bottom. That glass. Did not hurt. I'm glad I'm going to pick up one of these bars. I have to go home and get some tools. Now, I'll be back as soon as I can. About 20 minutes, all right? Oh, it's too long to wait, is it? No, all right. Only my back's hurting. I've got to stay up on my toes as the glass digs in. Right, you wait by there. I'll be down in two minutes. Over there? Yeah. Ah. Right. Hang on, I'm on my way. All right, now then. There we go. One foot up on there. And the other one. All right. Now then. Just keep as still as you can. What are you going to do? 
Just keep still. Oh. Oh. oh, thank you. Well, then, are you all right? Yes. Let's have a look, then, shall we? Oh, that's all right. Nothing serious. Now, then, can you walk? Huh? Yes. Yes. How did it happen? Oh, I'm so top. I never stopped to think. I was helping Mrs. Bynum get her things and the children onto the cart, and then I found Ted with shoe in here. So I stuck my head out to call to them, but they're gone. Now, let me see. It just needs cleaning, that's all. Come on. Where'd you learn that? St. John's Ambulance. Oh, it was quite professional. <laughs> Now it's time for you to go. I don't want to go. Well, you must hang out. Why? Well, because we both have work to do and neither of us is mortally wounded. The right thing to do is carry on as if nothing had happened. But something has happened, though. To me, anyway. Believe me, it's only a scratch. You'll soon get over it. Oh, my shit, daughter, mum. Dear. Oh, Bron, this beautiful he is. <laughs> There's another one here half asleep by the look of him. Well, three o'clock last night before we got him off. Oh, go on with his exaggerating. Well, now, if he's going to be sleeping at the wrong times, you'll have to go on nights like Owen. You'll be all right. That's enough now. I never eat all those. <laughs> hey, and how's my big sweetheart then, eh? Hey, when you're going to school, is it all fixed yet? Next month, I hope. <gasps> That's exciting. Where to? Well, we're trying to get him in over the mountain. Nothing around here for him, is he? I don't fancy it at all, somehow, this new school. But it's that or nothing, so there it is. Go on. I think you should call Lavender. Shall I go get it? Oh, yes, please. I'd love some. We've none in our back. Oh, look at his little fingers. Are they perfect? Yes, isn't he lovely? Would you hold him? Oh. There you are. Do you know? I hadn't clapped eyes on these two since they got married. But I sent over and told them they had to come and see the new baby. How are you settling down then, Yantoa? All right? Oh, aye. Fine, man. Great. What's the house like? Well, nothing posh. Not at the moment like, but we're hoping that soon. Mum! What's the matter? The turkeys have gone. Gone? Gone where? Come, come and gone. see. Oh, gracious. Look at that. Well, look. Do you want to? Would have got another thing like that. Could they be foxes? Huh? It was two-legged foxes. If there's any feathers out in the lane, we'd know which way they went. Let's go and see. Right. All right, go on. Margita, I have starved for you. I've come near to cut in my throat to think what a fool I've been. I thought you had to go to work. Margita, is it good to you? Good as gold. You're happy then? I will get to be in the end. You're not the only one to be aching. Margaret. No! Why? I'm Yanto's wife. We go away, right away, both of us, never come back. No. Why not? You do love him. I like him, that's all. And I think he likes me. That wouldn't be enough to stop you if you felt like I do. Not by itself, I dare say. What else then? Because I know. I know if I let you lay one finger on me, you would not be out of that door before you'd be saying to yourself, bitch, bitch, they're all the same. That's how she would be cheating on me if she had married me. Only I am not a bitch. And I will make you see that if it takes me all my life and kills us both. Uh,
keys? I haven't got none. You had a lot last week. Aren't they through that door you had it from? Well, you're not having any. I saw you chewing toffee down by the bridge now, just. Tuppence for sweets in one morning for a kid who were ages beyond. They've been unspoiled to you just because you've been bad in bed all those years. Well, can I have a halfpenny worth of licorice then? No! Now go on, out of my shop. Now go on! Now clear off, will you, when you're told, or I'll clip you one. Yes, Mr. Leos. <laughs> oh, there he is. Dad! I found this by Mr. Leos' back gate. Well, I could have blown it. And there was turkey's mess on his boot. Well, I could have come off for one of Dio's pigeons. Yes, and I asked for a penny with the licorice, and he wouldn't give me any. I have never known Elias to turn away business in my life. It was for fear I could see through the door. Because that's where he got them. I could hear them choking. Right, we're going down there. Young Tom, go in. And Aaron, you tell the box. Oh, Mr. Morgan. Quite a stranger to come into my shop. That little matter of a penny this morning, is it? Well, now, I hope young Hugh has told you the truth of the matter. I, I saw him just before, see, sitting on the bridge, uh, chewing toffee and uh, swinging his poor little legs. I remember thinking to myself, well, that's fine, he's coming on, isn't it, when some had given him up and all. Only, when he asked me for licorice on top, I said, oh, no, 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 by back, if you do, you'll be sick. And your mum will be cross with me for letting you. So, um... Uh, Go on home, my lovely, I said. Uh, have licorice another day. Yes. Yes. That's my turkeys I've come about. Your turkeys, Mr. Murphy. Well, aye. White feathers outside your back door and turkey mess here dried on your boots. Hens. Hens, yes. White chickens I've got. Oh, is it? Ah, we'll have a look then, shall we? No, 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 Mr. Going there, only me. No, no, I am going out there, Mr. Elias. Look, Mr. Morgan, if you lay a finger on me, I'll have the English law on you. Oh, do hell with the English law. Owen! <laughs> no! We're going to have a little bit of Welsh law for a change. Mr. Morgan! Have a look! Mr. Morgan, I tell you no doubt you can't do that. <laughs> are they there? Aye. Right! Marry! Marry! Help! Mr. Elias! You! Hold him, Harry! Hold him! Get him off! Hold him! Hold him, Harry! Hold him! 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 <laughs> there was my turkeys, and now I've got them back, so we're all square. Come on, boys. I took them for a punishment. Oh. All swollen up with vanity and lust and pride, a lot of you. <laughs> One day, there will be a reckoning. <sighs> you going for a tart yet? Yes, I think so. Right, back down now then, is it? Oh, a bit of a rest first. Hello. Who are you? I was about to ask you the same question. It's not your mountain. How do you know? People always pick Wimberies here. Don't they, Angharad? Angharad? Wait a minute. Morgan. Is your father Gwilym Morgan? How do you know who he is? Well, because he works in my father's pit. And I heard your sister singing a solo in a concert about uh, three years ago. You're just going anyway. Uh, I remember she had a beautiful voice. It's a pity she seems determined not to let me hear it again. If you are Yeston Evans that went away to Oxford, and if your father is Mr. Christmas Evans who owns the pit, you certainly don't own the mountain as well. See? Well, that's very true, but if you are Angharad Morgan and your brother is the little boy who used to be an invalid, wouldn't it be a good idea to let him ride home and uh, save his leg? Here, uh, give her one of uh, these. Hmm? Her name is Princess. See, 
if she likes you already. Well, maybe just as far as the road? It's you. Yes. Can I come in? Is anything wrong? No. I'm going to see the headmaster on Monday about starting school. That's nice. Young tossing work. I know. I was just seeing how far I could walk. I thought I'd come this way for a change. Sit down if you want to. Is that Jan Tos bath from last night? Don't worry. He'll have it clean and hot for him when he comes back. Yes, but doesn't he get in the way? In the way of whom? Not him. He's no sooner washed and fed than he's out again to a meeting and he stays out until it's dark and then straight upstairs. Yes, but you're here, though. Yes, I'm here, all right. I mean, you could make it nicer for yourself. Oh, I start about three, that's what I do. I can do all there is to do here in a couple of hours. You ask Young, too, he doesn't complain. How is everybody? Well, Mum and Dad are all right. Bron and Ivar are all right. And Hara's all right, except in a temper. Now, when's getting roused off Mum for not eating his food? She wouldn't like that, would she? No, because it's good food. Everything in your house is marvellous, isn't it? Didn't you like it there? I had two good days there. I had two wonderful, beautiful days. When you come to think of it, that's not very much. Sister-in-law, you say? It is more usual for the approach to be made by the child's parents. Yes, but his father is at work. In the pit? He is an overman, Mr. Motson, and couldn't easily be spared. Mm. And his mother? She thought I would be better able to explain it than she would. Yes, I can quite imagine. They are very keen for him to get an education. So are a great many others, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Morgan. Unfortunately, parental ambition is no guarantee of academic success. I shall require this form to be filled in and accompanied by three references. References? For what? References from persons of recognised social standing to whom he is personally known, concerning the boy's own character, capacity, application, and his family background, a reputation, position in the community and financial stability. I suppose they do realise there'll be fees to pay for tuition and fees to cover the cost of books and he'd be expected to provide his own pens and pencils and so on. Yes, they understand all that. Yeah. Very well. The other question, of course, concerns the boy himself. How much leeway he'll have to make up if he has been away from school for... Uh, how long, do you say? Uh, four years. Yes. Well, Master Morgan, do you want to come to school? Yes, please. Twelve eighteens? Two hundred and sixteen. Date of the Battle of Waterloo? Eighteen fifteen. Who wrote In Memoriam? Alfred Lord Tennyson. Hmm. <clears throat> we read from the top of the page. It is to be regretted that no mental method of Daguerre type of photography has yet been discovered by which the characters of men can be reduced to writing or put, it, put into grammatical language with an unhearing precision. All right, sir. that's enough. He reads very fluently. Yes, I know. But his accent is atrocious. Welsh speaking background, I suppose. Yes. You tell his parents we rely on them to ensure that he speaks English at all times. We allow no Welsh to be spoken on the school premises, and we expect this policy to be loyally adhered to in his home background. Is that understood? I will tell them what you said. Hmm. Well then, Master Morgan, assuming that all these formalities will have been properly attended to, shall we expect to see you next Monday morning? Mr. Motchell, Headmaster. There you are. What did you say in it? Oh, it's just the usual kind of reference. Uh, meaning I put in all the good things about you and left out the bad ones. What bad things?
bad ones. Well, such as given to launching assaults on deacons in public places. No, I left that out because I'm fairly certain you won't do it again. I still think it was horrible of them to be so nasty to my thin. Yes, there were many unpleasant things about that night. Was there anything good about it? Well, little communities like this have governed themselves for hundreds of years without laws or policemen. Just by making sure that if anybody steps out of line, their neighbours will complain unanimously and very loudly. Now, you see, it's not a good thing to bring a fatherless child into this world. It's not always easy for young girls to make sure that they won't. But all those that saw or heard about Night Maitlin will try that little bit harder. And that may save themselves and a lot of other people an awful lot of misery. Poor Maitlin, though. Yes, that was what we're missing about that night. The compassion. We won't let it happen like that again. Mr Griffith? Hmm? I don't understand about babies. Why do people always tell you lies about them? But do they? Yes. They say the angels bring them. Or the doctor in his black bag. Well, I saw the woman who went into Mrs. Bynan. She hadn't got a bag at all. And I heard what Mrs. Bynan was shouting out. And she wouldn't have used those words if there were angels there. So I know they're telling me lies, but I never know what to say. If somebody told you the farmer takes the eggs to the chicken in a little black bag, you'd know what to say then, wouldn't you? I say, don't talk so <laughs> daft. They come from inside. It's the same thing. Of course. Why didn't I see it? That's why sometimes they get fat and thin again after. That's why. How do the babies get out then? Well, through, uh, um, downwards. Same as the chickens again. Oh, I wish I'd asked you before. Well, I'd like to think you can ask me anything, Hugh, and rely on a truthful answer. Yes, good. So how do the fathers come into it then? How do fathers come into it? Yes. Well, uh, it's like a seed. Uh, you know there's a part of uh, little boys that girls haven't got? Well, when you grow up, the seed will grow inside you, and that part will be used as a channel where the seed comes out and is planted. Planted where? Where? Yes. Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? It's like any other seed. It's planted in the same place as the baby comes out. Yes. That's what Robbie Davis told me they do. Hugh, if you knew all this before, why did you make me tell you? Well, of course, I didn't believe him. I mean, it does seem awfully far-fetched, don't you think? Besides, he's a boy who's always talking dirty. I thought he'd made it up, just because it was the rudest thing he'd think of. Oh, well, now, Hugh, I wouldn't like you to be left with the thought there's anything nasty about it. I mean, uh, there was nothing nasty about bronze, baby, was oh, there? Oh, no, nothing's ever nasty about bronze. Well, right then. Now then, listen, I, before you go, I've got something for you. Um, now, I had it when I was at school and my father before me. Here we are. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It's beautiful. Oh, the rubber as well. Yeah. <coughs> Do this, and there's a tree underneath. And there, and another one. Pencils, crayons, and pens. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, you look after it, mind. Now, I'll come and see you on Monday and ask about your first day then, right? Hello, Aunt Harrod. You're, you're out early. Yes, he's finished with the Sopranos for tonight. Why? Do you mean you came here on purpose? Waiting for me? Are you surprised? Suppose you haven't got anything better to do. Hey! You! Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to Aunt Harrod. Why? Who said you could call her that? Oh, young dog! Do you know this young man? Has that said he could talk to you? Will you go away? You wait till you get home, that's all. Who is he, Aunt Harrod? You won't have cop it! Yes, Leave her alone! What do you think you're doing? She actually bit me. Look. She'd be going for walks with him and all, not telling anybody. Who was he? Yestin Evans. Bloody call on his son, if you please. Been to college and come back with a cut glass accent. If there's one thing that turns my stomach, it's a Welshman with a bloody twang on him. She was coming out of choir practice. It was only seven o'clock. Yes, that's right. And I did mean to come straight home and all, but... Oh, now I'm sorry, love. Only, you see, I ran into Tom Williams, see? 
He started to tell me about Will Brace, this miners' federation man from Abakan. You know what he's doing? He's suing the boss over small coal. Thinks they ought to pay the men for it, so he's taking them to court. Oh, he's a boy and a half, that one. <laughs> and what have you been doing today? Nothing. Well, why don't you go to town tomorrow? Buy some stuff for a new dress. I don't go anywhere much to wear one, do I? Well, no. But you could put it on for me. I wonder if you'd notice. Oh, now, carry it. Of course I would. I, I was thinking only this morning. I saw Griff Jones's wife and I thought, oh, dear, dear, there's a mess of a woman. I was thinking how lucky I was. Hey. I got something for you and all. For me? Aye. They have this uh, raffle, see, for the benefit club. And I won second prize. Look. Port. I had some once in my grandfather's funeral. I'm not fussy over it. Oh, now go on. It'll warm the cockles of your heart. Have some now then before we go to bed? Aye, all right. In a minute, though. I just got a couple of these letters to write first. Oh, you know, I do miss old Hugh writing these out for me, and that's a fact. Yeah, it's 23rd. I'll have to get that off tomorrow. But you can whistle for that, mate, because I kept the receipt, see? There's just the ink out, will you, love? taught you to write? This is Tom Jenkins, sir. Hmm. Did Mrs. Tom Jenkins also teach you algebra? I didn't realize we had blue stockings of such, such caliber up in the valleys. No, sir, that was Mr. Griffith. Ah. Now, Mr. Tizer has shown me these papers that you've done for him this morning. He's suggesting on this evidence that you're too advanced for standard four. I must say I tend to agree with him. After the break, I want you to report to Mr. Jonas. I've already been to his class and had a word with him, so he will be expecting you. Yes, sir. Dear Convaur. I mean, thank you, sir. Yes. Now watch that, Morgan. All right? That's all. Take those things with him. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Closing a door when you enter a room. Now come here. Here. Now would you mind telling me what you're doing here? The headmaster told me to come. You will address me as sir. Sir. What is your name? Hugh Morgan, sir. Put those things down. Stand up straight. So, you are Hugh Morgan. Quite amazing. We were told earlier in the day to await the arrival of an intellectual giant. <laughs> we were all preparing to bend the knee. 
Indeed, we were in some doubt whether we should be considered worthy to live in the same room with him. <laughs> or whether to petition the Commons for a special building. <laughs> well now, Morgan, I don't know whether you're aware of the fact that in this school term started last week. Is there any particular reason why you couldn't condescend to begin attending on the same day as the rest of us? I don't know, sir. You don't know? Well, then let me try you with a simpler question. Is there any particular reason why you couldn't condescend to come into the classroom like all the rest of the pupils? Immediately the bell rang. No, sir. You're not hard of hearing, are you? No, sir. So you did hear the bell ring? Yes, sir. Perhaps you thought Mr. Tizer was ringing it for his own amusement? <laughs> no, sir. In that case, what delayed you? I was cleaning myself up, sir. <laughs> what is this? Handkerchief, sir. <laughs> it's filthy. He was clean when I left the house this morning. Sir! Sir? These books are equally filthy. I understand you have some connection with the coal mines. <laughs> Well, you better get it in your head right from the start that if you are thinking of becoming a pupil of this school, you will have to adopt a more civilized way of living than you have apparently been accustomed to up to the present. You must tell your mother that if you arrive in such a state tomorrow morning, you'll be sent straight home. Is that understood? Is that understood? Yes, sir. Just waiting for who? Well, he's here, outside. Dropped in our house first, he did. Well, that's not right anyway, on his first day and all. Well, just to clean up a bit. Eh? Not for you to be upset, see. <gasps> Hello, Mum. What happened? The thing. I'm a bit stiff, that's all. Hang Harad. Go down to Bowen's and get me a piece of steak. Who did that to you? Nobody. Fell down on the mountain. Hold up. Up. Do what? Oh, that's it. How many were there? Five. Oh, I wish I could lay my hands on them. I'd have them flat if they were the size of a house. You're lucky there's nothing broken? L lucky? You go over there, William, tomorrow. It's worth losing a turn for. You tell that teacher we are having Hugh out of there and you ought to be ashamed for allowing it. Ash, no, man. But what is the point of trying to get learning in his head if they're going to half kill him before he gets it there? It's not worth it. Oh, go on, man. Boy, that worse than that before he goes to his grave, madam. Now then, you willing to go back there tomorrow? Yes, Dad. Right. You going to hide from them or stand up to them? Yes, kill him. Tuffy's. It's the big ones he's in with. Didn't you hear him telling you? I mean, you want your head red man talking to him like that. Stand up to them. That's it. And from tonight, you shall have a penny for every mark on your face, sixpence for a nosebleed, and a shilling for a black eye. Go in him. Ah, oh, go on, man. He'll be running rings around him in a month or six weeks, because I'm going to get a professional to teach you, kid. Well, what are you made up to, but? In an argument with a steamroller from a shaper, man? Come here. Come on. Let's have a look at you. Well, how much can you give me? No, no, no. Time, my time. See, I want an hour every morning to do any good. Half an hour to put a bit of beef on you. And half an hour for science. All right? Bye. Hit that then. All right. Go on. Hit it, man. Hit it. Go on. Hit it. Hit. Go on.
Uh, it's cheaper for him over there, I reckon. There's one feeling about Christmas Evans. He do hate spending money. He'll have to stop tipping there soon, won't he? If it carries on growing, he'll come down on top of the houses. Ah, oh, but he's got to do a fine art, see? By the time it starts sliding, he'll be six foot under anyway. Hospital marble. Public benefactor. <laughs> and nobody's going to bother to rub it off and carve in bloody fool, are they? No. Right then? Right. Your sandwiches are on the dresser, if you're mad enough to be going back to that bedlam again this week. Here's your breakfast, if you want it. You only got a quarter of an hour to get it into you now, so don't blame me if you're sick. This nice bacon smells after a run like that. Well, the boy's got plenty of guts, Quill. And there's nothing wrong with his wind. Just harden his legs up a bit and leave the rest to me. I die. How long before I be ready to fight? Well, today, man. But I haven't learnt much yet, have I? Oh, there's no odds to that, man. You fight today. You fight all the time. See, never let anybody come at him without you giving one back. It's just like swimming, see? The only way to learn how to do it is by doing it. Then you come to me, tell me what they've done to you, and I'll show you how to stop it. There you are, the shift. Now come with the die. Turn up, Ed. Same one. It's as good as new wedding in here. You even got the ink off the inside. Easy enough. Bit of sandpaper. Easy enough, he says. Been fiddling with it all the week. Come home off nights and straight out the back with him to put in time on it while you were out of the way. Look at them tiny little bits. You fitted back in and smoothed off. Thank you ever so much. It's really done beautiful. Why were Malcolm's men carrying trees to Dunsinane? Phillips? To fulfill the witch's prophecy, sir. They hadn't even heard about the witch's prophecy. Anybody else? Nobody? You, Morgan, stand up. To the best of my knowledge and belief, you haven't volunteered a single answer to any question the entire time you've been sitting there. No, sir. I can only think of two explanations. One possibility is that the headmaster was grossly deceived in his estimate of your intelligence, and you are, in fact, more than averagely stupid. <laughs> or else you've decided that any pearls of wisdom you may have to cast are too precious to be wasted on us. <laughs> Which is it, Morgan? I don't know, sir. Come here. Were you also fast asleep, as the rest of the class seems to have been when we were reading Act 5, Scene 4? No, sir. Good. So you will be in a position to inform us why Malcolm's men were carrying trees to Dunsinane. Yes, sir. Why then? Because they wanted Macbeth to be mizzled, about how many of them there were. <laughs> they wanted Macbeth to be what? Mizzled. 
Mizzle? What sort of language is that supposed to be? Some of your mountain jargon? It's English. Oh, I beg your pardon. So it's English, is it? You'll have to enlighten me then. I thought I had acquired a moderately wide vocabulary in the course of studying for an English honours degree. But I'm afraid this one is far too esoteric for me. How do you spell it? M-I-S-L-E-D. <laughs> so that is mizzled in it. Oh, indeed, my goodness, look you. And here is me in my ignorance, always pronouncing it misled. <laughs> Say it, Morgan. Misled, sir. I should think so, too. If Mr. Motzil were to spend some time actually in the classroom with you and hear the way you mangle the English language, he might modify his opinion of your intellectual attainments. Very sorry if I mangle it, because it's a beautiful language. But I don't think it's stupid to have read more words in it than I've ever heard pronounced. Class dismissed. Mizzle, 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 mizzle. I'll fight you after school at the back of Spackman the Trippers. Right, too. For a laugh, murder, you mind? I never mind Spackman. What about now, then? You know what Mr. Motzel said? No fighting in the yard. Oh, are you trying to get out of it now? No, I'm not. Just we're not supposed to, are we? Yeah, hark at him. You want to fight? Come on, then. Right then. Now you. by my desk until after break. I should, of course, report you to Mr. Motzil. However, I think this is a matter that had much better be dealt with here and now. You've all been warned time and time again about fighting on the school premises. But warnings are obviously not enough to get the message home to you. The time has come to make an example Convince you that I mean what I say. As for you, Morgan, I have set myself a task of civilizing you. And when I put my hand to the plow, I am not easily turned back. I had to begin last week by introducing you to the concept of cleanliness. This morning, I hope to impress upon you the fact that in normal human communities, we no longer settle our differences by hurling ourselves on one another as if we were a bunch of black savages. Take off your jacket. Mervyn Phillips, come here. Make it back. Oh. You, bend over him. That is, Angara. Here's the milkman. Take the money's on the dresser. Mum, mm -hmm. it's Justin Evans. Justin Evans? That's right. What? Well, well, don't keep him waiting on the doorstep, girl. Ask him in. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Evans. It is nice to see you. I had heard that you were back staying with your dad for a bit. Uh, yes. Is there anything I can do for you? I rather hoped you might be able to throw some light on that bit of a fracas last week. Bit of a what? The incident outside Calvaria after the choir practice. I suppose you heard about it. 
No? What happened? Really, I imagine it'll be all over the town by this time. Well, I don't know about that. I've got my work cut out without standing around listening to gossip. I'm hard out shift that, will you? Put the kettle along. Perhaps Mr Evans would like a cup of tea. Oh, no, thank you. I don't take between meals. Well, would you like to sit down? Thank you. <coughs> what happened was that your son, without any provocation whatsoever, knocked me down on the public footpath. My son? Which one? Um, Yantu. Uh, yeah. Oh, you knew all about this then, did you? Yes, of course. Ang Harad was there at the time. Ang Harad? Oh, I see. It wasn't about the union then? I have no idea what it was about. He seemed very angry about something or another, but uh, he was quite incoherent. I couldn't understand a word he said. I may say that my first instinct was to have him charged with assault. There were plenty of witnesses. I don't think that would be a very good idea. People around here don't think much of that for an idea. No, so I've noticed they prefer taking the law into their own hands. However, I didn't feel like getting involved in a public brawl with one of our own employees. Well, no, of course you didn't. And besides, Yanto's bigger than you are. I merely stopped to have a few words with Ang Harrod and he went berserk. <laughs> I've come for some kind of assurance that the same sort of thing is not liable to happen again. Ah, oh, well, now, you see, if you had come and had a word with her father first, it would have been all right. Ah, oh. <laughs> yes. Well, don't worry, Mr Evans. Gwilym won't hit you. I was thinking more about the possible implications. Having a word with her father. Well, good heavens, I mean, the last thing we want is to get even deeper into misunderstanding one another. He's wondering what he'd be letting himself in for, ma'am. Oh. oh, you don't need to worry about that either. Just talking to her, that's what you mean. Isn't it? Well, yes, that sort of thing. Yes. Hello? Aren't you having your sandwiches then? No. Aren't you hungry? No. Did you have carpet? What do you mean? Well, some of the boys were betting you had something under your shirt. And that's why you never shouted out. You look if I had carpet. <sighs> Hurt him? I man, like fire. Sometimes it pays to yell. If you shout loud enough, you'll stop quicker. That was just what he wanted, but I wasn't going to let him have it. Well, I'm sorry you copped it so bad. It wasn't all my fault, though. I never said it was. You had it in for you anyway, apart from the fight, because of this morning. What did I do? You answered him back. He loves being sarky to people, but they're not supposed to be sarky back. Sure I can't get you anything? Unless you could fetch a drink of water. All right. I'll send one of the little ones in with you. Thank you. Murdering you want. You're not fit to be let loose, not fit to be alive. A man couldn't do a thing like that to a child. You want somebody to go around there and hammer him flat. Hey, what was it for? I was fighting. Did you win? I might have. Good. Was there any match, boy? Not so much now. Hey, five shillings in the box for you tonight. Did you hear that? Have you gone clean off your head or what? I mean, that's what started it, isn't it? Giving him pennies and threepences to go and get himself knocked about. I mean, what next, I wonder? When you promise him gold sovereigns in his coffee and he'll go and get himself killed? Whoever the man is, he must have lost all control of himself to do a thing like this. No, he wouldn't have known it was like this, only Owen was awake and... He saw him trying to get his shirt off. It was all stuck to him. But his poor little back had been bleeding. How did he get home? I waited for Ellis the post. Brought him back in the trap. An hour late, long way round. Me counting the minutes what had happened to him. Listen, lovely. I've got some brass sick at home. Before you go to bed, I'll smooth it on so gently you won't even feel it. That'll cool it down, all right? Thanks, John. You are. 
You call in a dive bomb, Dawson. Tell him that he won't be there in the morning, all right? all right? And tell him if he's thinking of any more fighting lessons for any child of mine to keep himself well out of my way before I will swing for him. He'll be all right after a bit, Mum. Once he learns to handle himself. Ah, oh, get him. The one above all of them I would have expected to see sense. So what can you do with them, Bron? What can you do with any of them? I won't be long. Owen, you'll be late. Ta-da. Right. Ta-da. Ta well, look at this thing. Not a bite has passed his lips all day. And I'd get him a bowl of that cowl. Come on, shift you, my lady. And listen. Next time you start crying about how the men always get the best of it, just you think about that. And remember the things they get the worst of. Hey, what's all this about now? Oh, some fit got into her this morning. Got fed up turning the man over for me. Why couldn't she have stayed on in school, she said. She had as much brains as any of them. So I have. As much as Hugh. I did, though, to start with. Only when Hugh was reading books and the other boys were playing, I was always washing dishes or something. Sometimes I wish it was me that went up the mountain with you that day. Oh, you do, do you? I suppose you'd like to come back with black eyes and bleeding like this one by here. I would easily put up with a few black eyes if in the end I could get out of this place like he will. Come in. I don't want to be here with my shirt off of his visitors. Get on the sofa then like you used to. Who's I'll that now? Poor old Hugh. Always in the wars. William? Yes. It's Mr. Yestin Evans to see you. Oh, is there something wrong with the pit? Did your father send you? Oh, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. No, Mr. Evans was talking to Ang Harad the other day, and Yanto... Well, Yanto told him if he was passing by to drop in and have a word with you. All right. Well, how did you come to meet her, then, Mr. Evans? He gave me a ride on his horse, Dad. Well, that's very nice of him, indeed. Would you sit down, Mr. Evans? And I turned round, and there was Ang Harad, so he said, this is my sister. Harad, leave that now. I'll do it. You go and sit over by there. You've uh, you finished at Oxford, have you, Mr. Evans? Yes, that's right. Came down in July. Good evening, Ang Harad. Good evening. Hope you didn't object to my calling. Why should I? No reason, I hope, but uh, you seem very quiet. I'm trying to get used to the feeling of being told to sit and do nothing. I thought it would take at least a fall down the mountain for that to happen. No, I don't object to you, Colin. You mean I am marginally preferable to a fall down the mountain? Oh, yes, I think so. Don't you think so, Hugh? Oh, my mother made this bowl of starch, see, and it was there by the sink. And Dad thought it was just warm, soapy water, so he has a quick wash like this. <laughs> And after a minute or two, he came and sat down for his supper. And after a minute or two, he started making faces. <laughs> <laughs> Love, I thought we would have been sick laughing. You're feeling very happy tonight. Aye. I've been thinking about those times. It used to be all right when I was a little girl, see? Dad was all right then. He'd give me anything. One night, he came home with all glowworms in his cap like diamonds. He'd found them on the mountain and brought them home for me. Only when I started growing up, he turned funny. He locked me in a couple of times. He would have liked to have locked me in for keeps. What you been drinking, eh? Nothing. Yes, you have. I can smell it. Well, you've been having beer. Oh, I. A pint, like. I'm not complaining, mind. Let's go to bed, then, shall we? I do, mind. Well, up you get there. Oh, uh, matches I'm looking for. In the drawer in the back, then. Right. Ah, here we are. You still kept this, then? What? That love spoon that Owen made you. I found it in the back of the drawer. I'm going to burn it. Oh, it's a pity to do that. There's some lovely work on it. We could give it back. Might come in handy one day when you find somebody you'll stick with. Yanto, why don't we go to Canada? Good God, why Canada? I don't 
you know? So that we'd be together. Now, what are you talking about, girl? We're together now. Oh, no, we're not. It's all those men you're together with, not me. Morning, noon and night, they're all you think about. But that's my work, Margaret. But you never knock off, do you? No. Well, the union's my work and all. I mean, you keep going on as if I'm out there enjoying myself, but you know damn well that sometimes I get home here ready to drop. You do enjoy it all the same. You love every minute of it. Margaret, it's important. Yes, I suppose it is. Aren't you lucky? death. What's his brute's name, Achan? Mr. Jonas. He do live above the school, I expect, is it? Two streets high up. Oi, what's that? What? We was going to go over there, weren't we? Well, it's going to be the match on Thursday. Couldn't uh, hop over a bit sooner, like, could we? Good idea. Uh, to fix up about the match, yeah. That's right. Would he be in in the evenings, this Mr... Uh, Jonas. Mr. Jonas. If we was to pay him a social call, like? I don't know. Oh. Maybe we didn't ought to go to work tomorrow. Aye. Could always miss a turn, could we? Dress up tidy. Do the job proper. Best breeches, bowl a bloody hat. I ordered you to leave the school premises. My school and, and attack a master in front of his class. Two of you into, onto one defenseless man. Great hulking bullies. The most cowardly thing I've ever heard of. My God. If I were ten years younger, the most outrageous thing to do. Who are you anyway? Whatever possessed you to behave in this fashion? Well, he come busted in here, we didn't. <laughs> we only followed him. We asked him to come outside, and we come out. Oh, I, yeah. Of course, sir. If he wants to do anything about it, it's up to him. I don't think he will, though, somehow. Oh. Well, good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Round up, Blunt. Round up. Or he, uh, twelve with him with <laughs> Silence! Mr. Jonas, I. I think you'd better be relieved for the rest of the afternoon. Mr. Tizer can take over from you here. No. I should prefer to continue. As you please, of course. It's the front boy.
Turn to page 38. Look at exercise two. You will copy out the first six sentences and for your homework tonight you will rewrite them, changing all the verbs into the imperfect tense. Now then, mm -hmm. what did he say? Nothing. All the rest of the afternoon he kept looking right through me as if I wasn't there. That's all very well. Are you going to learn anything like that? I know, but listen, Dad. Playtime in the afternoon. He was in with Mr. Motson for an awful long time. Been in the classroom waiting and waiting. And then guess what? Mr. Tizer came in. Mr. Motson's changed him round, so we have Mr. Tizer all the time now. Oh, that's good. Have you told your mum about this? What did she say? Praise the Lord, is what I said. And don't anybody try and tell me he doesn't listen to press. Tipping down. Oh. And it was lovely this morning. Oh, no. oh. oh come on in, Di. No, oh, come you in, man. How do? Turn cold. Well, don't stand there dripping like that. Take a seat. Over there, is it? Right there. <laughs> Work up next Friday morning, all right? Expect you on a night like this? No, I got a bit there, man. Got a report to make. Got to dish out these tickets from the printers too, because the meeting's on Wednesday, see? If it'll be on Wednesday, how are you going to get down to Ponty by seven o'clock? Ah, oh, well, I thought, see, if you could wrap my suit in a parcel in the morning, I could leave it with Jack in the lamp room, then I can bath and change at our mams and go straight down from there. You mean you won't be home at all? No, I mean I'll go straight home and I'll bath down. No, you mean here? No, no, that's right. I won't come home here. It'll be quicker that time. Just that one time. That first time. Well, how do you mean? You're not saying you won't be holding meetings in Ponty ever again after this? Well, it stands to reason. I mean, if there's a good turn up, we'll do it again. Won't and we? if your man's house is quicker for one time, it'll be quicker all the other times. Come to that, even if it's only for a committee, it would be quicker, and that's every week. Oh, you could just call in here on Sunday afternoons. You could save tons of time that way. Now, Margaret! Now, fair play, Carrie, you knew what I was like. I ought to have, yes. Same as I know things and all. But I don't crib, do I? No. Now, look. We're electing a new subject next month, see? Ellis Back is resigning. If I can get somebody who's keen, he'll take a lot of the work off me. All right? I'll try not to be too late. But if I am, don't wait up. No, I, I won't wait up. Good night, then. Good night. Well, we've got to get them in the lodge. We want to get everybody in. Well, they don't reckon they'll be getting much benefit. Well, that's not the point. It's the principle of the thing. Now then, who's on the nine foot seam all together now? Uh, Yori Thomas, Di Fulpelt, Mansell Pugh, Johnny James. Yes, he's the one. If I can only get him, the rest will fall in. Now, where does he live? Oh, down the plant. Hmm. You're going down there now, are you? You can see him underground tomorrow. Oh, no, it's not the same. If I can take you for a drink, see, I can put it to him proper. Oh, it's up to you. It's Canal Terrace. We've got to be solid, see, Jack. Nobody left outside. Nobody out on their own.
To this end, Christ died and rose again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For as much as the soul of this, our sister, has departed this life, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. to get somebody from outside to take the tenor solo. But I said I don't think there's anybody better than John Elwin when he's on form. No. Poor old Gormans had to chuck it in altogether, no? He's very bad with the dust, you know. I'll put him up a plate of dinner and you can take it in to him. Bye, all right. You? But I always get it right in the end. Trial and error. I but if you know it's going to be too pie out on the edge. You know what size you're going to need, see? I know that. Anyway, I do it with a piece of wire. I'd to know you were here. Church you are, not chapel. I want to talk to you. Oh, there's nothing stopping you. Oh, I don't mean like that. I... Well, can't we meet somewhere tomorrow? I haven't seen you properly in three days. Three days? Good heavens. Last summer when you went to Rome, you didn't see me for three weeks, but you still didn't die of it. I'm Harrod. Well, I might go for a walk tomorrow, if it's a fine evening. If I do go, it'll be up Pant Lane, near the White Rock. Oh, that's better. What time? Half past seven. And now, may I pass, please? Huh? Thank you. Oh, yes, that's plenty big enough for me. I should hope so, indeed. It was big enough for the Reverend Walter Williams and his wife and daughter. Take some furnishing. Oh, no doubt members of the congregation would donate items if I dropped them a hint. <laughs> Rather got used to it where I am. No, it's not at all satisfactory. By your rights, you should have been here in the chapel house all along. Mrs. Williams should have been asked to leave three years ago when her husband died. That would be a little harsh when she had nowhere else to go. Yes, well, you made your feelings very plain, Mr. Griffith. Now, there is one other matter which has been discussed among the deacons on an unofficial basis, and that is, uh, who will be looking after you? Oh, I thought we were going to ask Mrs. Parry to pop in once a week when she cleans the chapel. No, that is not good enough. It would be better in a good many ways if you would get married, uh, Mr. Griffith. A single minister is unsettling for the female members of the congregation. And besides, there are many jobs we count on having done by the minister's wife. And these services we are being uh, deprived of. Wilt thou take this woman to be thine unpaid assistant? To preside over the mother's meeting, to organize the Sunday school outings, to keep the peace amongst the tea ladies, and provide free board and lodging for visiting ministers. I'm sorry, Mr. Elias. If that was a condition of my appointment, I should have been told earlier. Not condition. Now, don't put words in my mouth, Mr. Griffith. But I am allowed to say what would be for the good of the chapel. And you can't deny that a good, steady, sensible woman by your side will be a tower of strength and an end to gossip, and calm down the feelings of the younger and flightier ones. So what shall I say is your answer? That I have listened to your point of view, and I freely acknowledge your right to express it. And you will consider acting on it? No. I hope you're not judging the strength of your support by the size of your congregations. 
There's many a turning back to God just because they don't know anywhere else to turn. And regardless of who the preacher is. Let us be thankful they do turn to him. Can I come in? Oh, Angharad, yes, come in. And may I ask what Miss Angharad Morgan is doing here? I came to speak to Mr. Griffith. What is it, Angharad? It'll wait until Mr. Elias is finished. Oh, please carry on. I have said what I was going to say. I mean, it'll wait until Mr. Elias has gone. And what have you to talk to him about that cannot be said in front of one of his own deacons? I want to consult him about my spiritual welfare. Yes. Well, there are those who say it is time you consulted somebody about it. Well, I'm doing it so you can give them the glad news. It is small, but it's big enough. I'm sure it can be made very pleasant. The little back bedroom for my sewing room, and I will let you have the one across there for your study. And Harrod, it is useless to talk like that. Why? Well, there's Yeston Evans, for one thing. I don't belong to Yeston Evans. But he must be very fond of you, otherwise you wouldn't put up with the way you treat him. It's much like the way he treats me. Well, with someone like that, you'll have comfort and security for the rest of your life. That's no more than you deserve. I'm sure your mother would like it. Well, his father wouldn't. Oh, you'll come around once you're actually married. He might, but I don't think Yestin would risk it. What's in his mind, then? Perhaps he thinks that if he waits long enough, the old man will die. Then he can have me and the money. So tell me, as my pastor, would it be good for my spiritual welfare to spend the next 10 or 20 years trying not to hope for Christmas Evans to hurry into his grave? Why do you keep seeing him, then? Why do you let people talk? They'll always find something to talk about. Why do I see it? I don't know. Sometimes the days are very long and very dull and it's something to do. If you don't like it, you could put a stop to it tomorrow. Perhaps that's why I started doing it, hoping that you would. Wouldn't you give it your blessing instead? Well, how can I justify going against it? Easy enough, because you know he's not the one I want. You are the one I want. I heard you are shameless. Good. But only to shame the devil with the truth. Don't you see? It's impossible. You don't seem to realize that I'm in my 40s. Yes, I know since June. Then he was still in your 30s. The next summer I will be in my 20s. Do you know how much the members pay me? Rough idea. 25 pounds a year. Well, but there are compensations. Oh, yes, like the tide cottage. And there are gifts in kind very often, too. A, a couple of trout, a dozen eggs, raspberries from somebody's nice. garden. nice. Yes, and they're freely given, and I'm very grateful for them. I was given this coat, you know. Very expensive, very privately, very tactfully. Only been worn three times by Mr. Davis Butcher before he died. And very likely you'd be offered gifts too, just as tactfully by, say, Mrs. Ellis Price, Mrs. Reese Pinkhouse, and advised to alter them to fit so that hardly anyone would notice who had worn them before. You see? And on top of that, you would be asked to give what Elias calls services, which are far from negligible, as you know. You think I'd be no good at it? I think it calls for a certain humility. You think I couldn't learn? Oh, may God forgive me. I don't think I could bear to watch you having to learn or having to learn through any act of mine. Why couldn't you bear it? You can afford to answer that, surely. It would be little enough consolation for me to take out of this room. Because I think too highly of you. You have other volunteers, you know. They'll be queuing up to move in here. Good, sober spinsters with the right date on their birth certificate. Widows who can keep accounts and make wonderful pastry. I wonder which one you will choose. None of them. You can take that out of this room with you for what it's worth, because it is a certainty. I now call upon Yanto to give a report on why the South Wales executive recommend a rejection of the owner's ultimatum. Now, to my mind, we have got no choice. It is now five and a half months since we gave six months' notice, as we were fully entitled to do, to end the sliding scale this April, instead of renewing it for a further period, and to put in for a 10% advance on the basic rate, which has been going down steadily, as you all know. Now, instead of accepting this, the owners have given notice of a lockout to start on the first of next month, unless we climb down. 
The other part of the ultimatum is that they won't even meet us for talks unless we drop the system of balloting by the men and appoint a small group of representatives instead who will have the full power to say yes or no to anything that they propose. Yes, yes, yes. I have no need to point out to you that whenever that system has been employed, it gives the risk of bribery and corruption. Now, our executive recommends that we do not climb down, that we do not give up the right to hold ballots, and that we do not return to the sliding scale. Sooner or later, we will have to make a stand. And I think the time is now. How long do you think this will go for? Well, I'm not going to try and say it'll be easy. They wouldn't be shutting the pits down if they didn't think they could hold out longer than us. You know Marbun is still for the sliding scale on the quiet like. And if he was working down the pits, he would soon change his tune. Now, you tell me something. How much are you taking home now compared to five years ago? Well, damn sight less. Same as anybody else. You working any less hard for it? <laughs> Am I hell? And you're working on the six-foot seam boil. That's nearly worked out. You wait till you get on the four-foot. There's four times the dirt in that, and the roof's a bugger because there's workings over the top pressing down on it. And yet Evans is cutting back on the pinning just to save money. Oh, it's bad. Very bad. Yes. And now let me tell you something about my own brother, Ivor. Now, he's got Hopkin Pew's boy as his buddy on the forefoot. At the end of last fortnight, after both of them working their flaming guts out for two whole weeks, they hadn't earned enough between the two of them to pay the boy. He didn't only make nothing out of it, he had to go home to get money from the house to pay the buddy. So how much lower do we have to sink? Uh, that's true enough. Someone's gonna have to change. In England, you see, Glenn, miners are paid for repairs on the stall road separate rate. Get away. Of course they do. They always have done. And they get paid for small coal. I would like to move a resolution that this committee recommends members to vote no to the coal owner's ultimatum. Mm. Anyone like to second that? Aye. Those in favour? That is it, then, is it? That is what they call strike pay. One and tenpence a week each. Three and eightpence to keep a family of six for a week. If we was all in the union, it would be five and six. Aye, and if none of us were in the union, we'd all be back and working the proper wage coming in. So long as we go on crawling, we will sweat out our lives down that black hole and still go hungry. And have nothing to show for it, not even our self-respect. I don't know how much self-respect we will have when the clothes drop off our backs. There's plenty going off worse than us. Aye, only because my word is good with the shopkeepers. They know I will get straight to them if it takes me a year, and if this goes on much longer, it will. I mean, what is the good of this? It was eight shillings in the beginning. Oh, Ma'am, it's coming from England, <laughs> from the Miners' Federation of Great Britain. I mean, they've paid out and they've paid out, but they're not made of money. Nobody thought it would go on for five months. I've never seen any good come out of England yet. Oh, what's the English got to do with it? I don't care if they're bloody Zulus. They're miners, Dad. They're miners the same as you and me. Only difference is that they're starting to get up off their knees. And they're trying to give us a hand so that we can do the same. Can we have a bit of peace from all of this, please? Even if it's only by the table. By the table. You honestly think we're going to put our feet under that and sit looking round at each other while we can eat a couple of pieces of dried bread? Are we supposed to get food out of the air? You still get one hot meal a day, if it, even if it's only this broth. You want to go down on your knees, boy? I don't on his knees. I'm begging for forgiveness. There's only one getting any good out of this strike. And that's Malvin Jones, the undertaker. Oh, your generation will come through, no doubt. And most of mine. The old ones were dying, man. The old ones. And the little children. I mean, what are we supposed to do, Ian, to it if there's nothing here? Mum, I am not hitting at you. It isn't hard if it done to you either. To me, nothing. I used to have some respect for her until I saw her last night walking down Pant Lane with Yeston Evans. Meek as milk she was, after all his father is doing to this valley. If she had an ounce of loyalty, she would be spitting in his face. Just go 
God is my judge. I don't know where this is going to end. Well, look who it is, my favorite scholar. Come and sit down, my lovely. <laughs> How's things? Oh, Bron, terrible. Hungry, is it, boy? No, it's not that so much, only don't keep yelling at each other. I know, a lot of people like that. The nerves all on edge, that's what it is. Nobody shouts in this house, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you ought to be here half an hour ago, didn't you, Bron? Aye, <laughs> oh, Gareth, it was. Screaming his head off, just because he thought the boys next door had gone paddling without waiting for him. <laughs> oh, where's your nice curtains gone? Uh, they're up in Mrs. Elias's bedroom window. And food from Mr. Elias's shop is in my pantry. Going back to barter now. Aye, well, it can't go on much longer, whichever way it goes. If we stick it out another week or two, it uh, might even win. <laughs> then we'll be back down the pits with you, poor old boy. <laughs> no more afternoon practices for you. Do you know, since they've had nothing better to do these last few months, they have been drilling the life out of that choir. Look at him now. Butter wouldn't melt. But they've had more bullying from him than they would have had from Christmas, Evans and Jan to all rolled in one. <sighs> all right, then. If that is the feeling of this meeting, we will take a vote. I would just briefly like to make two points, Mr. Chairman. Now, first, if we vote to recommend going back now, it has all been for nothing. For worse than nothing. We will be going back for less money than we came out on. Now, second, we in South Wales will be ratting on the MFGB after all the support they have given us. They've got this fight coming up for the eight-hour day. They will need everybody's backing. But we will have sold ourselves back onto the sliding scale for the next three years. We won't be able to lift a finger. We will be a dead weight holding back the entire movement. Now, I don't know whether you can vote yes to that and still hold your heads up, but I know I can't. All those in favour of recommending acceptance of the terms offered? Those against? Why London? What's in London? That's what I'm going to find out, isn't it? Oh. You off then, is it? That's right. Heard the news? No, what? Old Evans, Christmas Evans. Kicked the bucket last night, stroke. I expect he drank too much champagne in a celebration dinner. <laughs> Very likely. Well, I expect you'll be dropping your mama line now and then. How are you getting on, eh? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, so long then. So long, Kefartha. Got home keys? Um, no, no, they're upstairs in the drawer. Thank you. Well, where did this lock come from? They're mine. Good room for them. You want to come? Uh, there's nothing much around here, is there? Hey, Owen. Hi. About Margaret, see? Never mind. To take care of her. That was the main thing. The way I saw it. And for her, too, and all I know. You know what I mean? Aye. Only I made a mess of it. Both of us did. Anyway, it's a long time ago. You really want to come? Well, it'll be better, the two of us, together. Oh, it'll make all the difference in the world. You know something, Boyo? This is the first good thing that's happened to me this year. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Ta? Did you know Owen was going to? in a tunnel? Good gracious, alive. Well, they could have stayed here and done that. 
Well, what tunnel? For an underground railway in London. And he says he's put... Where's the envelope? Here it is. He says he's put in a piece from the Times newspaper. Ah, here it is. Well, what's it say? Uh, there's a piece here. He's put a line down. Uh, Evans Morgan. A marriage has been arranged between uh, Yeston Dylan Evans, son of the late Mr. and Mrs. Christmas Dylan Evans, of Tinicoid, and Unhadded... Let me see. 